Hello, and welcome to Elevator Pitch Series for the Radiographer. I am Michael, and this is the eighth video in the series on radiographic imaging. In this video we will be looking at the ultrastructure of the X-ray film. We'll learn about the layers of the X-ray film and different types of films. This is an X-ray film. When you look at it from the top, as seen on the image by the left, you would observe that it is flat. Now, when you look at it from the side, as seen on the image by the right, you would observe that it is not thick. Even though the X-ray film appears thin from the sides, it actually has multiple distinct layers which we cannot see with our naked eyes. These include the base, subbing layer, emulsion layer, and the supercoat. Let us look at these layers one by one. The base is the supporting layer on which other layers rest. Think of it like how the foundation of a house supports the rest of the building. If the base of the X-ray film is like the foundation of a house, it means that it needs to be strong and resistant to tearing. Also, because the image will be viewed through the base, it should be transparent. Other characteristics of the base are that it is flexible, resistant to moisture, and should not react to chemicals, X-rays, or light. Nowadays, the common material used to produce film bases is polyester. The same material used to produce certain clothes. This polyester is a synthetic fiber that is manufactured from polyethylene terephthalate resins. In the past, cellulose nitrate was used, but it was highly inflammable and chemically unstable. Next is the subbing layer. This is also known as the adhesive layer. It is made of a mixture of gelatin and a solvent of the base. It lies between the base and the emulsion layer. And what it does is that it makes sure the emulsion layer stays glued to the base at all times. This is important because the emulsion layer and the base do not behave the same way when they are wet and when they are dry. The emulsion layer swells much more than the base when the film is wet and also shrinks much more when dry. Without the subbing layer, this swelling or shrinking will cause the layers to separate from each other. Also worthy of mention is that dyes are sometimes added to the subbing layer to prevent an unwanted effect called the crossover effect. To keep this video simple, we have left out unwanted effects like the crossover effect, halation, and irradiation. We did however leave a note in the description explaining these. Remember to check that out. Next is the emulsion layer. We explained this layer in the video on latent image formation. It is the fundamental layer where the image is produced and stored. As seen on the diagram, it is composed of tiny silver halide grains dispersed in gelatin. Because it is the grains that form the image, they determine the quality of the image. The larger they are, the more sensitive they are to radiation. However, manufacturers are careful not to produce too large grains because these cause unsharpness. Next is the supercoat. It is also known as the anti-abrasive layer. It is made of a thin layer of gelatin and has two important functions. First, it protects the emulsion from damage. I like to think of it like how screen guards protect our phone screens from damage. It also provides the right surface that a film should have. Glossy, to prevent dust from accumulating on it. But not too glossy, so that it can generate enough friction to pass through the rollers of a film processor. So far, we have been talking about one type of X-ray film, the dupletized or double-sided film. As you may have already observed, this film has got emulsion layers on both sides of the base. This makes the film more sensitive to radiation and gives it the ability to produce images with greater contrast. However these films are more expensive, and they suffer the crossover effect. There is a less commonly used type of film called the single-sided film. In this, only one side of the base is coated with an emulsion layer. Even though this makes the film less expensive and less prone to crossover, it is also less sensitive to radiation. In addition to the four layers mentioned in dupletizing films, single-sided films have another layer called the anti-curl layer. As we already mentioned, the anti-curl layer is found only in single-sided films. Because single-sided films have the emulsion layer on only one side, the excess weight on one side of the film would cause the film to curl. To prevent this, the weight is balanced by adding an anti-curl layer to the side that is not coated with emulsion. The anti-curl layer is made of gelatin. It is made to have the same thickness as the emulsion layer to keep things balanced. Also, dye is sometimes added to the anti-curl layer to prevent halation. This is why it is also called the anti-halation layer. In this video, we classified films based on how many sides that are coated with an emulsion layer. Let us conclude by showing another way to classify films, based on their use of intensifying screens. First are the direct exposure films. These are not used with intensifying screens. They respond to X-rays only. 
In the past, we have learned that intensifying screens amplify the effects of X-rays, producing greater density for less exposure. This means that these films would need far more exposure. Second are the screen type films which respond to light and are used with intensifying screens. Thanks to intensifying screens amplifying the effect of X-rays, this type of films require less exposure. That concludes this video on the ultra structure of an X-ray film. We look forward to your questions and comments in the comments section or via email. If you love this video and would want more content, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Until next time, do enjoy the learning process and take care.